Hi guys and welcome back to my channel today. I apologize for not putting up a video before now, but as you all know, I did injure my ankle. I guess tomorrow will be two weeks ago. Um, so it has been quite a struggle. Y'all, uh, being in pain is so, it's so difficult to deal with every day. I guess I haven't been in chronic pain in a very long time except for my fibromyalgia flares, and those kind of come and go, and even those types of flare-ups are nothing like the pain from this sprained ankle. So what I've been doing is just, um, you know, I did go to the urgent care last Saturday, and um, I was given um, x-ray with, <laughs> actually the x-ray's on a little CD disc, so uh, I was given that and told that it is not broken, but apparently I, I did strain the uh, deltoid ligament in my leg. So the pain, um, it has been severe. I, I can't, can't, there's no denying that. And I am still using a cane to get around. So what I've been doing is just, I soak it in warm Epsom salt water three times a day. And after I soak it, I lather some Lubriderm lotion on my ankle and my leg. And then I do these little massaging techniques. And I found these on, in a YouTube video from a physical therapist. And uh, what you do, you just basically take your thumb and, and do some friction massages along the tendon like that. And that's supposed to break up any scar tissue. And it also uh, stimulates the blood flow to that area, which helps it to heal. So it's very painful to do, dig, you know, digging your thumbs into that uh, torn ligament. But I know that it's necessary for me to get some healing. And um, then I found some simple little stretching exercises, like you just bend your foot up, you know, upwards and then backwards a little bit and then uh, rock it side to side. Uh, there were some more exercise techniques which I could never do. Uh, one of them was actually squatting, <laughs> you know, squatting down onto the floor and then getting back up. Well, I can't even do a squat like that even with a perfectly uh, healed, <laughs> even without an injury. So uh, that's definitely out of the question. Um, so I haven't been able to do any babysitting, so Jill's had to, you know, work her her. Her work schedule around that except for Friday um, there was just no way around it she just she had to work uh, there was no way that she could get off early enough to be at the house to get Issa off the bus so she was totally dependent on me and I told her I said I'll be there you know my the hardest part for me is getting down the stairs and then back up uh, it's no problem to drive because it's it's the left foot that's injured, so I can still easily use my right foot to uh, press on the, the accelerator and the brake pedal. So I left at 1.30. I had to be at her house at 2.30. And thank God I left an hour early because there were three wrecks just between my house and, and Jill's, which is only it's less than 20 miles. And one wreck was pretty serious, and it had just happened. So the traffic was backed up very badly, and it did take me, oh, let's see, I left at 1.30, I got there about 2.25. So luckily, you know, I had the forethought to leave early so that I would not be late to get him off the bus. If a parent is not there to get the child off the bus, then uh, the bus driver has to take the child back to the school, and it's quite an ordeal having to do that. So I definitely did not want that to happen to Issa. So, um, you know, I used my cane. I was able to, to lift myself out of the car and and to walk over to the, the bus stop and got him off the bus. Then I drove to Ife school to pick her up. Jill had called the principal of the school and told the principal that Ife's grandmother would be picking her up and that I did have an injured foot. And um, she said, well, okay, just tell her to park in front, and then when I see her, then I will bring Ife to her car. Well, of course, there was nowhere to, to park. Um, the caravan with all the parents in it waiting in line to get their children, I was just unable to park to where the principal could see me. And 
So I was forced to get out of the car and, and I walked down the sidewalk. And then when the principal saw me, I got into trouble. She said, you were supposed to stay in your car. And I said, well, I had to park so far down. I knew that you couldn't see me. And so I went back to the car and just stood out on the sidewalk and, and waited for her. And she did bring Ife to me. So I got her strapped in her car seat and I uh, finally got back in the car and I just went to McDonald's. I knew I would be unable to go inside and go into the kitchen and make them a snack, so I just went through McDonald's and got the children a Happy Meal. So we went home and um, I, I couldn't get the door unlocked. I, I don't know why grandmothers have such a hard time getting the keys in the door and getting the doors unlocked, but I, I do every time I go there. So I just put their Happy Meals on the front porch and, and let them eat them, and they kind of ran around the yard and played and everything. So I finally, um, I just kept jiggling the lock and jiggling at the key and finally got the door unlocked and got inside. And of course, the, uh, the buzzer on the alarm goes off. Well, the alarm, um, the control case is in the back of the house. <laughs> so I had to walk to the back of the house you know, put the coat in so that the the big uh, bullhorn alarm wouldn't go off because it is it is so loud. <laughs> so I finally got back there. I think I think um, the alarm. I think we're given a minute to get from the front door to the alarm to turn it off. Uh, just took care of the kids and stayed there um, a couple of hours until Jill got home. Of course, you can't just sit down and not take care of a, a six-year-old and a, a three-year-old. They have to be tended to and have to get um, water for them and things like that. So actually, um, so so Jill got home and then I um, she I, she said, "What do you need, Mom?" I said, "Well, I need a half gallon of milk and I need some ibuprofen because all this time all I've had to take is a leave." And then I have regular Tylenol here. I've, I'm even out of the arthritis strength Tylenol. So Jill stopped by the drugstore and picked me up two bottles of um, ibuprofen. It is burning me. You know, I'm gonna have to take um, some Atlanta or something. But I made sure that I took it this morning. After I ate breakfast, I was thinking, well, you know, I'll go ahead and take the two and try to get the pain level down a little bit. and. Even taking it on a full stomach, it's still burning my esophagus. <laughs> oh, but y'all, I hate sitting here and complaining, but that's all I got to talk about right now is just um, this sprained ankle. It, it's just so painful. Uh, many, many of y'all have told me about your sprains and how you've had a broken foot and a sprained foot and how much worse the sprain was for you than the actual breakage. Now, when I broke my foot um, 10, 12 years ago in the car crash, of course, I was on some heavy narcotics, so I don't remember the pain ever being this bad. And during that crash, I broke the tibia, the fibula, and the talus bone. Uh, I was taking Percocet and other strong narcotics, but even if I were to be prescribed something like that, I, I would not take it because I'm a recovery drug addict. I definitely never, ever want to take another, another um, narcotic unless I'm in the hospital and uh, have to take it for surgery or something like that. So I've just got to um, muddle through. And actually, um, I was surprised when I woke up yesterday morning and... Um, I went to step out of the bed, I could actually put some weight on the left foot. I'm still using the cane, but I could tell that I could, it, it was more limber than before. So I, I really think that the walking uh, and taking care of the children on Friday did me a world of good. It was actually, you know, I, I bent my foot in different ways and exercised it, and I really think that the exercise helped it. Um, you know, physical therapy is, is a miraculous thing when it comes to a, a body injury. That's about the only way to, um, to heal your body, even as painful as it is to do the physical therapy. 
So I'm just going to continue with the uh, warm Epsom salt soaks uh, three to four times a day and a little massaging and some more physical therapy. It's raining today, but if it slacks off, then I am going to attempt to go down the stairs and, and go out and walk a little bit and continue with um, a, um, a little bit of walking every day and hopefully to strengthen the ankle and to help it heal. So uh, some of y'all also told me to uh, wrap my foot in a heating pad. So I'm using the heating pad that Susan and Simba sent me last year. So what I've done is um, I couldn't get it to stay on my foot, you know, just laying it flat across my foot. So I, I wrapped it up in a little circle and put a rubber band around it, and then it stays on my foot. So when I'm sitting here in my recliner, watching YouTube videos, I just keep it wrapped in the, the warmth and that will keep the blood flowing to the injured area and continue to help it heal. So um, no, I'm not going to go to an orthopedic surgeon. I'm going to give it more time to heal on its own. Um, when I was a young mother raising three children, every time they would get on um, get a stomach virus or, you know, start vomiting and having diarrhea, I would rush them to the doctor or rush them to the ER. I, I just always thought, you know, that they had to have medicine to get better. But I learned, you know, that that's not the case. You just have to give the human body time to heal on its own. So that's what I'm doing with this ankle. I don't want to get a steroid shot, and I definitely don't want an orthopedic surgeon cutting on my foot. So I'm just going to give it more time to heal, and um, I want to thank you all, each and every one of you, for all of your, your prayers and your love and for all of the well wishes that you've sent to me. It really means a lot to me, and it helps to keep me out of a, a depression, and it helps me to, to read your comments and to know about your ailments and injuries and things that you've gone through that you know, that I'm not alone, and this is definitely not the worst thing that could have happened to me because there's so many of y'all who suffer each and every day in chronic pain, and um, you just deal with it, and, and you continue to have a happy outlook on life, and you don't let it get you down, and I'm so proud of you uh, for being that way and for ha having that type of character and for just keep keep on keeping on. That's all we can do. So thank you again for being here. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, I would love to have you join my YouTube family by hitting that red subscribe button down there. And y'all, just keep on coming back. Goodbye, guys.